As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us, Christ, your great compassion to forgive as you forgave. May we still behold your image in the world you died to save. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Good morning, everyone. This morning we hear a message, a very important one, from our Lord in the Gospel today. We hear about the importance of forgiveness. Let us pause for a moment then as we call upon God's forgiveness to forgive us of our sins of this past week as we return to our Lord this day at this most holy altar. Let us pause for a moment then and prepare our hearts to receive God's forgiveness as we should forgive others. Lord Jesus, you deal with us not according to our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you teach us to forgive our neighbors in justice. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are kind and merciful, rich in compassion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will.
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the singer, sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice, that when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is number 75. The Lord is kind and merciful. 75. The Lord is kind and merciful. 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 Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all oh my being. Bless God's name. Bless the Lord and forget not God's benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. God pardons all your iniquities and comforts your sorrows, redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful, merciful, and gracious is our God. Slow to anger, abounding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we 
are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, your servant is listening. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven will be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor who brought before him, who owed him a huge amount of money. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and his property in payment for the debt. And at that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized one of his fellow servants and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Forgiveness does not change the past. But what it can do for us is it can expand our future. Today as we reflect on the profound and transformative power of forgiveness, as Catholics we realize that we are called to emulate or, or, or follow in the footsteps of Jesus. And we are asked to extend mercy and forgiveness that has been exemplified for us in the life of Jesus Christ himself, especially during his earthly ministry. We know that forgiveness for the Christian is not just something that comes to us as a mere suggestion, but rather it is the fundamental aspect of our faith. It is the 
cornerstone upon which our entire faith has been built upon. We read in the Gospel of Matthew when we pray our Father, uh, when, we, when Jesus teaches us how to pray, he says that we are to forgive the trespasses of others as our Heavenly Father forgives our own trespasses. These words remind us that forgiveness is not just simply an act of kindness, but rather it is a necessary step in the life of every Christian, in the journey that we are all asked to walk towards our ultimate salvation. When we forgive, we open our hearts to God's incredible mercy. We allow his grace to work within our hearts. We allow it to kind of root out, if you will, the, the darkness and the, the plaque of, of the lack of forgiveness that kind of builds up within, within our hearts. Even if we don't feel like it, forgiveness in the eyes of our Lord is a good thing. One example of uh, forgiveness, and I'm sure that you all have many examples that you could give, but one of the more extreme ones that, that I remember from a, from a book I read titled The Hiding Place, written by Corey Tenboom, was, uh, was a, a docu- kind of a, a story that she had told from her, her experiences in the, in the Nazi concentration camp. She had lived in Holland, and her and her best friend had been imprisoned in Holland, Uh, under the Nazi regime for hiding Jewish people in their house. Her friend had succumbed to her time, had died from uh, her time in the concentration camp, and Corey was one of the few survivors. Corey tells the story in her book, The Hiding Place, that a number of years after the war had come to an end, she had an opportunity, uh, had received an unlikely letter from an individual who had worked at the concentration camp. And he had asked to meet with her. Reluctantly so, she decided to meet with him and they met up in a church in Holland. And in her mind, she had imagined this man as an individual who had, uh, was larger than life. That she remembers him wearing the Nazi uniform and the horrible atrocities that he had participated in. But when she had met with him so many years later, she saw a man in this church standing in front of her, now elderly and broken, in a gray suit, carrying a cane and somewhat downtrodden. This man looked at her and had asked for forgiveness for what he had done. He said, I know that since my time there in the concentration camps, the horrible things that I've done, I know I've asked forgiveness of God. I know I've become a Christian in my life now, but I need to hear the words, I forgive you from your lips. Confused and and rather frustrated at this situation, Corey struggled. She was unsure as to whether or not she could truly forgive this man who really was responsible for her best friend's death. But in her book, she she writes this particular line that I think speaks to the importance of forgiveness and, and speaks to the strength that Corey was able to draw upon in order to forgive this man. She says, forgiveness is an act of the will. And the will can function regardless of the temperature of the heart. Forgiveness is not always easy. It requires humility. It requires a willingness on our part to let go of anger, to let go of resentment. When we hold on to grudges, we know that we carry a very heavy burden and that hinders our spiritual growth. It doesn't allow us to grow closer to our Lord. It's like a chain that, that seems to bind us. It seems to bind us to the painful things of our past, the hurts that we all have experienced 
in our life. However, we know that when we, when we choose to forgive, we're breaking free from those chains. We're leaving our past behind. Forgiveness never changes the past, but it does expand our future. It gives us a sense of, of liberation and of peace. Jesus reminds us in our Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In a few moments, we're all going to be saying that prayer once again, like we do each and every Sunday in this church. And many of you probably pray the Our Father at home time and time again, but do we really allow that line to sink into our hearts that that our forgiveness from God is linked to our forgiveness of others, and that we cannot expect God's mercy to be at work in our life if we are unwilling to show mercy to others. So as we gather here today, let us take this time, let us take this short hour to, to really examine our hearts and to ask ourselves, are these grudges and these resentments, are these fears and anxieties, are these things that we harbor in the depths of our hearts, are they really willing, are they really worth holding on to? Or are they things that we should let go? Have we truly forgiven those who have wronged us, or are we harboring hatred towards them? Let us remember that that forgiveness is not just a a simple one-time act, but forgiveness is a daily commitment to let go of the bitterness and to choose love. In conclusion, forgiveness is the cornerstone of our Catholic faith. It is the source of healing. It is the source of reconciliation. It is the source of divine grace. By forgiving others, we know that we are opening ourselves to God's forgiveness, and we are drawing closer to him. May we embrace the call today to forgive, just as the Lord forgives us. And may his love and mercy shine throughout all of our actions. I believe. Mindful then of the mercy that we have all received, we ask God's mercy on the church and on the entire world. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church in the United States, that the Eucharistic revival may lead to deeper devotion and love of the Blessed Sacrament, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in public office, that they enact laws according to the common good, let us pray that each of us may have the grace to forgive those who have hurt us, and may the mercy of God heal all division and brokenness. Let us pray. For those who struggle with addiction, 
May Christ the physician be with them in their struggles and bring them hope and healing. Let us pray. For those affected by the earthquake in Morocco and for those giving assistance, may God and his church bring them strength and healing. Let us pray. For all those who have died this past week, Margaret Rashad, Jerome Gillings, Wayne Sabo, Robert Kaiser, Gordon Sinjin, Paula Went, and Patricia Neese, and especially for all those who remember at this Mass, Rita Dieter, we pray. God of infinite mercy, instill in us the courage to forgive one another. Grant this and all the prayers we make through the one who taught us to forgive without limits, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Number 706, where charity and love prevail. 706. Where charity and love prevail, there God is ever found, brought here together by Christ's love, by love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, God's charity we learn, let us with heart and mind and soul now love God in return. Forgive we now each other's faults, as we our faults confess, and let us love each other well in Christian holiness. Let strife among us be unknown, let all contention cease, be God's the glory that we seek, be God's our holy peace. Let us recall that in our midst dwells God's begotten Son, as members of his body joy. We are in Christ made one. No race nor creed can love exclude. If honored be God's name, our family embraces all, whose Father is the same. Please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, 
and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. communion hymn is number 871 we shall rise again 871 
Come to me, all who weary, with your burdens and pain. Take my yoke on your shoulders and learn from me. I am gentle and humble, and your soul will find rest. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We shall rise again on the last day, with the faithful rich and poor. Coming to the house of Lord Jesus, we will find an open door there. We will find an open door. Though we walk through the darkness, evil we do not fear. You are walking beside us with your rod and your staff. Only goodness and kindness follow us all our days. We shall dwell in the Lord's house for so many years to come. only have one announcement for us this morning, um, and that deals with our Holy Family Trivia Night. Um, we invite you to join us at Holy Family Hall this Friday for our Trivia Night beginning at 6 p.m. The theme is general knowledge and is free to play, no registration required. Just show up with your family and friends and have, uh, get ready to have a great time. You can play by yourself or as a team. We'll be serving snacks and drinks are available um, at the event, so please join us at 6 p.m. here at our Holy Family Hall for Trivia Night. If you've ever done one of those, uh, you know it's a lot of fun, so we make sh uh, just want to make sure that uh, we have a great turnout for that, so please bring your family and your friends. We also do acknowledge today as Catechetical Sunday, a day in which we celebrate the passing on of our faith. If uh, there are any formation catechists, aides, helpers, small group leaders, or any substitute teachers in the congregation this morning, I'd like to take a moment to invite you to please stand. That one. All right. Tom, this is just for you then, I guess. So, Oh, we got another in the back there. So, very good. The early morning crowd here at 8 a.m., you guys don't stay up late enough to catechize our youth, I guess, huh? Is that, is that it? So, very good. Well, let's, uh, let's extend a blessing to uh, each of these individuals and give thanks to God today for you and for all of our catechists as we pray. With your fatherly blessing, Lord, strengthen these, your servants, uh, in their resolve to dedicate themselves as catechists. Grant that they may continue to strive to share with others what they themselves derive from pondering your word and studying the church's teachings. And let them gladly join those who teach in honoring and serving your name. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. How about a round of applause for our catechists? Thank you. Now let us all please stand and pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing song is number 689, Though the Mountains May Fall. 689.
Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Could the Lord ever leave you? Could the Lord forget his love? Though a mother forsake her child, he will not abandon you. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory of God. Should you turn and forsake him, he will gently call your name. Should you wander away from him, he will always take you back. Though the mountains may fall and the hills turn to dust, yet the love of the Lord will stand as a shelter for all who will call on his name, sing the praise and the glory 